Hey guys, it's great to see you again. I'm Michelle Lee and I'll be your visual artist for this lesson. Today we're going to talk about the ocean and the coral reef. And we're going to create an artwork of a seascape of the coral reef. What you're going to need today? A sheet of paper, pencil, eraser, and a cup of crayons. It began about 10,000 years ago, toward the end of the Ice Age. A group of tiny organisms called coral polyps dies. The animals which had attached themselves to the ocean floor near the shoreline leave behind their hard limestone skeleton. These, in turn, form the basis for the next generation of polyps. And on and on. Today, billions of polyps later, that limestone floor has grown to support the world's largest structure made by living organisms. I will repeat this as we go on. Coral reefs grow in warm tropical seas where the temperature of the water stays above 65 degrees. Most reefs lie near the equator in shallow waters, usually 100 feet deep or less. Coral reefs, here marked in yellow, need the warm, shallow water to form. They form close to the equator, near the coastline, and around islands throughout the world. Locations of most of the coral reefs in Southeast Asia and near Australia, that's where most of them are. The world's largest coral reef is the Great Barrier Reef from the coast of Queensland, Australia, 1,600 miles long and can be seen from space. It's one of the seven wonders of the world and its name is the Great Barrier Reef. These living, growing, changing structures thrive in waters within a 30 degree band north and south of the equator, but you won't find them just anywhere in within this band. Coral polyps are very particular about their environment. The water must be shallow, the weather must be sunny, and there must be very few nutrients in the sea. Corals form very slowly. It begins when the coral polyp attaches themselves to the hard surface at the edge of an island or other land farm. During the next several thousand years, the colony grows and expands to form reefs along the shoreline. Coral reefs are large underwater structures made up of millions of tiny animals called coral polyps. They're among the most important animals in the ocean. These tiny creatures called polyps are the living part of coral. Coral polyps look like plants but are in fact simple animals, a relative of the sea anemone. They have soft tube-like bodies with a mouth surrounded by long tentacles. These tentacles snatch and grab its food from the water. Coral polyps protect themselves by building hard cases or tubes out of minerals in the water. Over millions of years, these cases form giant coral reefs, which provide homes to many, many sea creatures. The coral reefs are warm, clear, shallow ocean habitats rich in life. A reef's massive structure is formed by any animal, the coral polyp, that often lives together in large colonies. When the coral polyp dies, they leave behind a hard stony branch structure made of limestone. These coral polyp colonies can grow quite large and weigh many tons. Coral polyp thrive by symbiosis. It's a close relationship between two organisms. One gets sunlight and protection, the other gets food. That's the coral polyp. Coral polyps have this symbiotic relationship with tiny plant-like organisms called zooxanthellae. Only with the right conditions does the coral survive. If the water is too deep, are clouded with nutrients, sunlight would not reach, and no food produced. 
that would equal no survival. Hard coral are named for their stony bases or hard outer skeleton. They live on the seafloor and on slopes and are reef building coral. Hard coral feed only at night and are bright and colorful during feeding. Soft coral have soft bases with no outer skeleton. They grow on overhangs and cliffs and feed during the day. They are very bright and colorful. When the hard coral polyp dies, their skeletons are left behind. The new polyps attach to the skeletons, and when these new polyps die, their skeletons add another layer. So a reef is built over a very long period of time and consists of layers and layers of coral polyp skeletons. Look at the colonies of different types of coral and see arrays of shapes and vibrant colors. You have all different kinds of coral. You have branching black coral, table coral, sea fan, brain and lettuce coral, spiral wire coral, pillar and maize coral, elkhorn and staghorn coral, and different types of fluorescent coral. The coral provides shelter for many animals in this complex habitat. Corals are sometimes called the rainforest of the sea because of the enormous diversity of plant and animals. Coral reefs represent less than 1% of the ocean floor, but these structures are home to almost a quarter of all the marine animals. The National Ocean Service uh, says reefs may be, may be habitats for millions of species not identified yet. Creatures of the reefs are seabirds, uh, sponge, jellyfish, starfish, squid, octopus, shrimp, rays, snails, crabs, lobsters, clams, sea turtles, sea snakes, and many, many types of fish. Coral reefs help protect the shoreline and coastal wetlands from extreme wave action. It's a protective barrier helping to stop and prevent erosion from the incoming waves. The coral reef is a medical resource. Researchers have developed medicines from plants and animals and substances collected from the coral reefs. The coral reef is filled with life and provides food to many people all over the world. Countries near the reef depend on, upon tourist dollars from people who come to visit the reef. The coral reef's sensitive ecosystem is threatened by overfishing and damaging fishing techniques, industrial runoff, sewage, agricultural waste and erosion due to land clearing, other toxic chemicals, do you know many sunscreens use chemicals that damage the ocean's ecosystem? Water pollution, chemical runoff from pesticides and fertilizers eventually make it to the ocean. Many chemicals are poisonous to the creatures who live in the ocean and the reefs. Plastics do not dissolve or decompose. Ocean creatures in and around the reef can be injured, made ill, and die because of trash that has made its way to the ocean. Boat anchors thrown by careless captains break up bits of the reef bit by bit. Visiting tourists, divers and snorkelers touch the reef or try to break off pieces for souvenirs. It took thousands of years to grow what some careless person just broke off. An unmeasurable amount of destruction in that instance. But there's hope. Marine parks and marine protective areas, the MPAs, have become important in protecting and managing coastal reefs and their inhabitants, restoring damaged reef efforts, coral forming by growing polyps in nurseries, and planting them on existing reefs. Here shows 
from the left to the right, coral trees cultivating juvenile corals, coral fragments grown on non-toxic concrete in the middle, reef balls, and coral preparation for relocation to the right. What can you do to help? So we are doing our coral reef and um, first thing we're going to do of course is write our name on our artwork. Now uh, you can draw it with pencil or you can draw it with crayon. I am going to go ahead and use my black marker so that you can see it. You can use it with crayon if you want. If you want to grab a brown crayon to start the ground with. We're going to be doing the background of our artwork in just a minute. Um, I usually go, I'll grab like a little red first of all, and I put some little waves like this kind of, this is not the ocean, this is just something I'm putting here first. Just try and do some kind of little wavy. I'm going to turn this into something first. This is going to be in my foreground, so I want it first. And then with another color, I, I, I'd say I did mine in like red, and uh, then I come back with like a yellow and go around it in yellow. It was like a wiggly hot dog. My wiggly hot dog. This is part of my coral reef. Some of them go over like a, like a, like a little ledge. Maybe I have another one here. I can put some in between. Started off with my red little wave. There we go. You could put some in between here. Maybe just some little lines. That will work too. I would like to do dots on top of that but not on the little hot dogs themselves and here's going to be my ground my ocean floor my ocean bottom maybe i have something back here that comes up cool next thing i'm going to think of is i'm going to start down here and i'm going to just wave it up watch i'm going to start down here on the ground and I'm gonna kind of just wave it up right I'm gonna wave it up I'm gonna wave it up I can do another one coming out of it wave it up wave it up we're doing all kinds of coral this is one of our soft corals I usually go with a light color to do this part, um, like light green, light yellow, and then I'm going to do some little, it's almost like little C's throughout the whole thing. But now this is with my color, I, d I would do this normally with my yellow or uh, a light green. All right. If you draw it with your pencil, you're going to have to color over it. Like I, I had to color over all of these. And it's okay if you turn your paper. And it's okay if you make a mistake. Nobody knows. And this is in the water. How many of you have seen, have you, anybody seen long hair in the water? It kind of just flows and goes with the, the, the flow. That's why they say water flows. I 
I would do that with um, one of my my green, the my dark, uh, either my light green or my yellow. I like to do those with another space here. I'm gonna just basically do the same kind of thing. See how I went up, and then I'm gonna come right back down. And then some of them are gonna cross. This is gonna be in the back, so it's in the background. It's in the background. And I have some more here. It's in the background. Maybe I have a small one coming this way. There we go. Next thing I'm going to do, you grab a color. I am going to think about some little circles, a circle here. Let me show you on another sheet of paper. This is what I'm going to be doing. Kind of like some sponge. This is one, two, three, four five or six, okay, and this is my ground. Look, I'm gonna wiggle it down like this. I'm gonna wiggle it down. See how I wiggle it down? The ones that, in, the ones in the back are in the background, right? All right, and then some places I put a, a colored line one way and a colored line the other way. And then I can also put a little curve on the inside same thing on all of these. See how it, that's what I'm going to be putting. Right here. It doesn't matter how many you do. It's a type of sponge. It's kind of going to be hard to see my little curve on the inside. Some of them you might not be able to tell. And my front one goes first. Then I keep do the rest of them. See how cool that looks? Awesome. I'm going to do one on this side, but this one's going to be different. This one's going to be different. I'm going to just do them in a row. Like I have one here. One here, one here, one here. It could be four or five and put my little my little curve on the inside, right? This one is going to come down. Okay, this is the base, the ground, right? I'm going to stop when they touch. Almost like fingers, see? Okay, and then we'll do the same thing. some little throughout. That'll be a different type of sponge, right? And we can color it differently. I'm going to put that one down here. I don't like them all the same size. They're all going to be different because when you find them, they will be different. like to have variety. Maybe this one doesn't show. These just come down like fingers. This finger met this one. And this one could be just coming in the background. There we go. See my little lines. My little lines. I didn't put them in this one. A few. It may not show. My marker has got a kind of wide tip, so it won't quite show. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to think of a Y. 
You know, you know what a Y looks like? This is the letter Y. There's my letter Y. Now I put another letter Y connected to that Y. Why I'm putting a Y? I don't know why. I'm putting a Y. I do know. Okay, well, this is my Y tree, right? I'm going to turn it into another type of coral. Maybe this one. There we go. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go around that one. All around. Here we go. Around it. Around it. Kind of wave around it. This is going to be another type of coral. We're going to do a sea fan in a minute. Go around it. Watch how cool it looks when we're done with it. Look how cool! That is another type of coral. We can color that. I generally like to do different colors, uh, colors that'll show up. Um, you see how this one is more angular? It's straight. Um, and these were more wavy. I'm going to do another kind of wavy one here and let it come out. This one is going to be a sea fan. A sea fan. This is going to be my sea fan. And it's coming out here. And for that one, I'm going to go around everything. For this one, I'm going to go around everything that's there. Okay, so I'm going to start down here. I'm going to wiggle it again. So I'm wiggling it. But I'm going to go around everything. I come back down and I'm going to go around. It's going to come around. It's going to go around. That's my C fan. Just like that. And on this one, I'm going to go ahead and put some little lines. Just kind of connecting it. Wiggles little wiggles in different colors. The colors, uh, you could do that. Peach, yellow, orange, any kind of color you want. Actually, you remember you saw all those pictures? You can see like the, 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 the sponge, you can see the sponge, different types of sponge in different colors. They have colors all over the place in this. So just go ahead. This is gonna be a sea fan a sea fan and I'll just go ahead and wiggle it around I'm gonna wiggle it around and you can come back and add more sometimes I do like a little number eight and I just keep wiggling I just keep wiggling. Now when I go to trace this over again, I trace that first one. And the wiggles, I don't worry about the wiggles too much. Some of the wiggles I get, I, I will do that with my crayon. Okay. Uh, you could do something that kind of looks like little hot dogs right here. All coming out. We're going to do a sea anemone right here in a minute. That's going to look like little hot dogs too, huh? Let me go ahead and start my sea anemone. First thing I do is I make a, a little oval. Then I'm going to make another oval. You can do it with that in colors, right? And let's go ahead and make, I'll put a point on it. And I'll just keep going around and around. Putting a point on it. And I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to fill it with more in between, in between each one of these, it's going to be my sea anemone. Before you know it, your ocean starts coming alive. There we go. And I'm going to put lines coming through. That's how we draw it. I'm going to put some brain coral right here. I might put a few more of these little hot dog looking things here. My hot dog looked like my cat's got to and bent them up because they like to chase things. 
here we go. And I'm gonna do some brain coral, some little wavy lines, almost like I did up here. Just fill this whole space with lines. It could even be lettuce coral because that kind of looks, that, that this one looks more like lettuce coral. If I can show you, this one here looks more like the brain coral and this one looks more like the lettuce coral. Your job will be to color all of this up. It's okay if you put uh, start off with dots and dashes, that will work. What I usually do is find a spot and I'll just go ahead and put dots and dashes and then I come back and color it with another color. Put some orange and yellow and then I'll put brown over it. But all you basically have to do now is color it up. And then I color my brown right over it. I hope you enjoyed working with this. Take a moment and view your artwork. Turn and look at your neighbor's artwork. Notice the similarities and the differences between the two. Thanks for joining me today. We learned so many things. We talked about the ocean and the coral reef. We created an artwork of the coral reef. As you go th through your week, notice the habitats you see and think about the animals that live there in that habitat. Uh, think about how um, people could stop waste and uh, recycle. What can you do to help the coral reef and the world? Enjoy the rest of your day. I can't wait to see you again.